When we're talking about our CPU, it's always critical to understand cooling and understand how cooling affects our CPU and where it works. Well, when we're using our CPU, it's our CPU is performing a lot of tasks, millions of tasks a second or even billions of tasks a second, depending on how fast our clock speed is. And it's constantly performing those calculations and it's constantly having electricity flowing through it and it gets very, very hot. And it can get very, very hot very, very quickly, especially if it doesn't have any ventilation or say if there's a lot of dust that's accumulating inside of your computer. So what type of solutions do we have to cooling? We have a act, passive cooling, and active cooling as well as liquid cooling. So let's start with the passive cooling. When we're talking about passive cooling, we're talking about things such as heat sinks. Now an example of a heat sink would be like this small brick here. It's essentially a fanned piece of metal. It's placed on top of your CPU in order to basically pull that heat away and to disperse it into the air. When we're talking about our passive heat sink, uh, the heat sink may is popularly made out of aluminum or uh, possibly a copper aluminum mix because copper is actually better at moving that heat than aluminum is. So we have our copper aluminum mix, but why does the heat, heat sink fan? Why don't we just put a big block on top of the heat, on top of the CPU? Well, when we're talking about cooling, the more surface area we have, the better. That's more area that we can get air pushed through, more area that can actually take pull that heat away from our CPU. So when we have our CPU and we have our heat sink sitting on top of it, if our heat sink was just one big block, our surface area is just basically, well, our surface area is just the cubed area of this block. So this side, or the side, the top, and then the face, and then use your math, math and add them together and you get the surface area of just the cube. Now. For increased cooling, we want an increased surface area. And rather than making this block huge, rather than making this block take up the entire space of our computer, which would be impractical, what we do is we simply take this block and we fan it, which means we cut down into it, like you saw on our uh, heat sink that we have. When we fan this block and we add the valleys, what we're doing is we're increasing the surface area. The more surface area that we have, the cooler the block gets. Think of it like when it's a hot summer day outside, if you're wearing a short sleeve shirt versus a long sleeve shirt, when you're wearing a short sleeve shirt, you have more of your surface area exposed, more of your skin area exposed. That's more area that you can have air come in and actually evaporate some of that heat off of you. Whereas if you were wearing a long sleeve shirt and you were protecting that off and it wasn't exposed, then that's not really going to transfer anything. So all of these dips add additional surface area and it increases our cooling capabilities for our CPU. Now, a lot of times, especially for our CPUs, just having a heat sink isn't going to be enough. We're gonna actually need to add some sort of active type of cooling to this process. Our version of active cooling is going to be our fans. When we take a heat sink block like the one that we have here and we add a fan onto it, that fan helps move cooler air into that heat sink and get the hotter air out, whether it's by pushing colder air across of it and moving the hot air out of the way or sucking the hot air out so that cooler air can go in. Moving that air across of there gets rid of the hot air and puts in cooler air. And this is again called active cooling rather than just the passive cooling of having the heat sink on top of there. We have a computer here that utilizes both uh, uh, the passive heat sink, but it also uses the active cooling with a fan blowing across the heat sink. So we already went ahead and we took out of our, took out the screws that hold the heat sink in place. So we're just going to go ahead and remove it. And as we can see, our heat sink was located directly on top of our CPU. This allowed the heat from the CPU to radiate into our heat sink and basically get trapped in all the small channels, get trapped on the surface area. Directly next to where our heat sink is located, we have a fan. This fan draws cool air from the front of our computer, pushes air through the warm heat sink, and then pushes it out the back of our computer. This is why when we have a computer, we always wanna make sure it's well ventilated. This allows the hot air or the cool air to get in the front and push through the back. If there's too much dust, if the fan isn't working, if we have the front covered by, say, we have it 
in a small confined space or the back doesn't have any ventilation, then that heat is just going to build up inside of our computer and then it's going to shut down from overheating to avoid destroying the CPU. Now, another aspect of cooling with the heat sink is something called thermal paste. Thermal paste normally comes in a small tube like so. Um, thermal paste is essentially a mixture of silicon or some type of metal like silver or an additional uh, concoction of mixtures, which essentially assist in the heat transfer from our CPU to our heat sink. Now, in the case of this CPU we have in this computer here, um, let's say we had a CPU that was overheating and we checked it out, it was clean, the fans were all working. The next thing we want to check when we're having CPU overheating issues is sometimes there, we could have bad thermal paste. It could have, um, could have crusted over or may have not been properly put in the first time, so we're going to have to check that out. So we remove our heat sink, we remove our fan. Next, we're going to actually go ahead and we see the surface of our CPU. We don't need to remove the CPU for this process, so we'll need to clean off some of this old thermal paste. This can be done with, say, a small Q-tip, but we don't want to get any wet particles on our board. We don't want to get any cleaning mixture inside of our electrical components, so we only want to clean that in a suitable way for our computer that doesn't destroy any of our components. After that point, we'd actually take some of our thermal compound, which comes in a small syringe, and place just a small bit on our CPU. Just enough that we could say take a toothpaste and just put it in a small dot and then after it's there then we would actually take our heat sink again and replace it back on top of our CPU. This would replace our thermal paste and would assist in our the cooling process and assist in the heat transfer between our CPU and our heat sink. Sometimes just the passive heat sink or even the active fans blowing through our, our case isn't going to be enough to draw that heat away from the CPU. Let's say we have a high performance gaming computer or we have a computer that we're doing a lot of uh, extreme editing on or a big server system that's doing massive mathematical calculations or we're using it as a scientific computer um, and we just can't get enough cooling in there. Well, we do have another option and this is gonna be called liquid cooling. Liquid cooling actually takes liquid and moves it through pipes, through a heat exchange in order to cool our CPU. Now, of course, this requires an extra pump and extra power and specialized tubing and everything through our CPU, as well as uh, precise liquid materials to pump through our pipes and put through the CPU because we don't want anything leaking into our computer that uh, might corrode the pipes that are used to cool it or actually get into our computer and destroy our components. So when we think of liquid cooling, we have our CPU here, and rather than having just our standard heat sink on top, we have a heat exchange, which actually has pipes that can fill with water running through it, or not water, but our cooling solution. There are different cooling solutions and different mixtures that can be used to, to optimize how well it works. Now, this heat exchange, we have our liquid pump and then our tubing. All our liquid cooling does is take our cool liquid mixture, pump it through our pipes into our heat exchange, where it's then heated up and pulls heat away from our CPU and back into our pumping system to recool off and then be pumped once again through the CPU um, and keep cycling over. Again, remember this takes extra power in order to power the pump. Um, sometimes people will just use liquid cooling just for their CPU. Sometimes their liquid cooling will go throughout the entire case and cool several different parts. But liquid cooling is not something that you would you'll very ever see on uh, just a typical out of the box manufacturer's made computer. Uh, you'll see liquid cooling on very specialized computers, or you can do your you can do research on precise liquid cooling setups if you ever want to get into high end performance gaming computers. Um, you can buy custom computer or buy a custom computer that functions with liquid cooling, or if you wanted to do the research and actually implement it yourself. Uh, just remember that liquid cooling works, and all these other cooling systems work because of the basic way that heat works. Heat is essentially particles that are moving very fast and they want to go from hot objects to cooler objects. So we want to have something that's cooler 
touching our contacting with our CPU. That way the heat can exchange from our hotter CPU to our cooler object and we can move it out of there. Um, CPUs don't like heat. We don't want them to overheat because that could destroy the CPU and shut down our computer. So we just want to make sure that we keep our CPUs clean, keep them free of dust, keep our thermal paste going, and we'll have a nice cool CPU and we'll be able to run that CPU for a long time and run it at very good speeds. So that's all we really have for these videos on our CPU sockets and characteristics and cooling. So we've talked about how we have all the different socket types for Intel and AMD, as well as exactly what goes into a CPU and how it works, all the way to how we can keep it cool and keep it running and not shutting down from overheating. So hopefully you enjoyed being with us at, here at Cyberry.it, and we'll see you next time for more A-plus uh, technical videos.